Hey, what's going on? What are you sluts up to? You having a good week? Those of you in college, you enjoying your time off? You having fun? You getting a little too fucked up with all your friends back from high school? Doing irresponsible things? Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. High schoolers, you're still in school, right? I should know that. I should know because I, I see school buses drive around. I actually watch very intently. I, I know exactly what time the school bus comes by. I've got my really intense high-tech binoculars that I use to stare. Uh, good old 11th row Kathy has, you know, oh, as, as I can set my clock by her, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so doing another one of these because it's been a fucking week, and I guess that that's, it's becoming a real thing. I'm actually being consistent with these. Who would have fucking thunk it? Um, after every fucking series I did on my channel back in the day, it was like, hey, I'm going to do this Let's Play of The Sims or some shit, and then get three episodes in. And well, actually, the reason I didn't do that one was because I I got three episodes in. It was actually one of the most one of my most popular video series. Like the first episode of that has like up over a hundred thousand views now, and I didn't even take advantage. Well, I guess I didn't know it was going to be popular then, but whatever. Uh, but I did way more, and then the whole audio for it ended up getting fucked, uh, and so it was just me playing a game that I hated with no audio. And I was gonna fake it and be a dick and like pretend that it was live, uh, but then. Then I decided against it. Wow, really enthralling stuff you're, you're coming out of the gate with this week, Taylor. Fucking fascinating. Um, anyway, before we get going into it, the uh, show's brought to you by Patreon. So, thank you guys so much for the second month of Patreon support. It's still growing. Uh, slowing down a bit, but that's to be expected. But, you know, prove me wrong. <laughs> oh, man, we have fun. So, uh, yeah, be a Patreon Five bucks a month. I, I release the bonus episode, premium episode, extra episode um, midway through the month, and that's about the same time that I do the twenty dollar a month or more Patreon Skype chat, where we all hang out for a while. So there's still time if you want to get in on either of those things. The Skype chat's twenty a month. The um, premiere, premium, whatever the fuck name I should have thought of that before I fucking made it. Episode is halfway through the month as well, so you got plenty of time to get in on that. So check the link below and. Just as important, just as important as the Patreon is the sponsor for this week, and that is Vapo Labs. So let me get on to the read. Once again, I didn't read this ahead of time because I'm really hoping that they sprinkle more genocide jokes in as time goes on because that's it's just wildly inappropriate and and I like that. You know, who I'm sure that like kind of alienated their Jewish audience a bit, but I'm not sure what my percentage of uh, Jews listening are. So who knows? Maybe they made a really good business decision. Maybe there's like, I don't know, uh, a temple somewhere, or I guess a synagogue playing this at their lessons, teaching the, the young Jewish children what not to be like as they grow up, and that just alienated all of them. Anyway, uh, with their, their little, you know, sideburn curls and their hats. <laughs> Fuck am I talking about? Anyway, vapor Labs. Uh, if your usual e-juice is your wife, then Vapolabs Premium Vapor Liquid is your mistress. That's right. It will be fun to fuck, and it won't take half your shit when it gets bored of you. Uh, they didn't write that. Anyway, uh, the best part is there is no more sneaking around. But enjoy all that primal satisfaction and thrill with every hit that you use Vapolabs Premium e-liquid. Life is short. Enjoy your vape. You will just love Nuka Crunch, a sweetened 90s breakfast cereal, swimming in ice-cold milk for that nostalgic crunch. That's my favorite flavor that they have. I'm already out of the container they sent me. So if you're listening to this, Vapor Labs, <coughs> you know. Uh, are you ready for hippo milk? I like that one, too. I'm out of that. Uh, straight from the sweet strawberry tits of victory. Hard to harvest, and you won't find the creamy strawberry milk anywhere else. No matter what flavor you decide on, they're all eligible for Juice Rewards. Juice Rewards is an innovative rewards program at Vapo Labs. Just buy a few bottles and then get a bottle free. It's that fucking easy. So go ahead and pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff. Vapo Labs. Science, bitch. I like how they used to have bitch with like the numbers sign and the money sign and all that. Uh, and I guess they didn't like that I was saying science, B, uh, underscore, number sign, pound, star, uh, ampersand. Uh, I guess they didn't like that. Anyway, Vapor Lab Science Bitch. Uh, please use responsibly. Must be 18 years older to purchase. Use this product. California Proposition 65. This product contains nicotine. Uh, don't forget, use the code MERCA25. That's MERCA25 for 25% off e juice with free shipping. Only at vapolabs.com. So check that link out below. Um, if I'm being honest with you, even if if I'm being. Why, why would I preface it like that? Like I'm Like everything else I say is a fucking lie? Well, to be honest with you, um, you know, I'm only. I'm only 
a little attracted to, to, to underage girls. Oh, oh, oh. like why, why the fuck would I say, even say, if I'm being honest with you? Of course I'm being honest with you. Um, even if they don't send me more free shit, I'm going to use them for my liquid supplier now. And Melissa is too. She, I don't like the flavor of pumpkin very much, but they sent me a pumpkin pie e-cig juice, and so I just gave it to her, and she loves it. She loves it. She's just raving about it, nonstop. Just, uh, it's like, oh my god, Melissa, shut the fuck up about your, your e-juice flavor. You're just, you're loving it so much you can hardly handle it. Um, so, Merca 25 for 25% off your e-juice, and check them out. Anywho, now it's on to... Hear that rustling of paper? That means that I'm a little prepared. Oh, I guess I wasn't even prepared enough to know what page I wrote shit down on. Anyway, so... I'm going to keep the the current events news shit a little shorter and questions longer this week because there's just it's been a weird influx of questions, just so fucking many of them and it's not shitty questions. They're good. I know you're surprised, right? You know, I I I've always had so little faith in you guys and look at you proving me wrong, making me look like a right dunce. Um the only well, no, no I'll just go into this in order. So that whole San Bernardino shooting um or the Bernie Sandorino shooting, as I've taken to calling it. Um, I'm sure the internet would love that, you know, with all those Sanders fans out there. He's not that bad, if, I, if I'm being honest. Like that, if why am I saying that now? Uh, yeah, but that Bernie Sanders guy, he's just easy to make fun of because he's an old, feeble-looking man. But at the end of the day, I do think he's probably a good guy, and he's just doing what he thinks is best for the country. It's just he's such an easy target, and uh, it's especially fun to be like counter counterculture you know and be that dick sometimes where it's like uh, oh the counterculture is going towards bernie so i'm going to be counter counterculture which is like oh well fuck that guy who you think is going to make a difference um yeah and, and the more like into it you get the more like i've i've definitely posted under like throwaway accounts on online forums uh things hating on bernie just for this like just sometimes with just misinformation just to see how many people will, will comment back and be like, that's not true. And Bernie Sanders is actually, he would have been a Republican in 1932 before blah, 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 blah. And it's just the, the hilarity that ensues. It's just great. Um, just just good old-fashioned family trolling. So, anywho, that's a great way to spend your, your time, Taylor. Fucking wasting it on message boards and image boards that nobody's going to... Whatever, whatever. Onward and upward. That whole San Bernardino shooting thing, in conjunction with the Planned Parenthood one... Uh, it's been a pretty shit week for people who enjoy guns and even more of a shit week for people who didn't want to get shot while they're trying to get birth control or have a, a pizza party at work celebrating their sales goal for the month or whatever the hell happened. Um, so yeah, that that was a pretty fucking awful situation. Like 14 people died. Maybe uh, that, last time I checked it was last night. And it was 14 at that time. And so it, it, I, there was an injury, or a couple injuries as well. So it's possible someone else has died. So at least, at least 14 people. Um, and then I think it was only two at the Planned Parenthood thing. But everybody's been freaking out on Twitter, which is, you know, uh, the worst possible way to get your news or to, you know, put your finger on the pulse of America since it's only really young people and people leaning a certain way. Like there's very, seems like the, the moderates, of Twitter are few and far between. It's either like so far to the right that they've got like a Confederate flag or like a KKK hooded man in their little profile pic and it says like white pride, like hashtag um, no more blacks or like hashtag back to Africa or something like that in their description. Or it's just some, you know, pathetic little wimpy white guilt fruitcake who will just is doing everything he can, just flagellating himself in front of the online masses of women and minorities, just being like, "See, I'm 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 one of the good ones, aren't I? Oh, I'm so sorry for who I am and what I was born as." Like it's there, there's like no middle ground, and that's kind of frustrating. But it makes it for funnier, you know, times to read through it. But just based on Twitter, once again, uh, Twitter was up in a in a hissy. The whole internet was up in a, a huff. About like, oh, why isn't this Planned Parenthood guy being called a terrorist? Why isn't he being called a terrorist? If he were Muslim, they would call it a terrorist. He's totally, totally a terrorist. Like, uh, well, yeah, I think everybody knows the guy who's trying to terrorize you to be afraid of going to get an abortion is definitely a terrorist. Uh, that, that, I think that goes without saying. Uh, the real question is why was Obama, when he first came out about this whole thing, 
with the San Bernardino shooting, trying to push some narrative about it being a workplace issue. Like, oh, we don't know if it's terrorism or if it's a workplace issue or what's going on. Uh, they could be connected with ISIS or they might just be irritated that the the uh, assistant manager borrowed their stapler again. You know, it's, it's up in the air, really. But we don't even know. And then it comes out. Like, uh, then he offers, like, a revised statement because people were calling him out on it of, like, uh, you know, you're trying way too hard to come off as uh, even keel right now when you're being even keel to the point of just looking like a buffoon. Like, we know what happened here. The fucking lady, like, said that it was because of ISIS. She, they had connections to, it was, I believe it was, she was from, they were both from Pakistan, I believe. And they had connections to Saudi Arabia. And she ascribed the actions to ISIS. Uh, both of them are dead now, so that's a good thing. Uh, in a way, they left a six-month-old kid behind. Like, Jesus Christ, you couldn't have planned your, your terrorist suicide a little better? Like, you couldn't have maybe decided to take some birth control or maybe pull out uh, 15 months ago, knowing that you were going to shoot somewhere up, like, shoot a place up, and then definitely get killed? Unless they actually expected to survive, because they had a whole fucking house full of, like, pipe bombs and thousands of rounds of ammunition, which is probably exaggerated, but, like, if anything, uh, they were planning something bigger, and they just got in a tizzy, for whatever reason, at uh, the fucking work that day. And so they went home, got their guns, came back, and just shot a bunch of innocent people. Maybe they ordered, like, a meat lover's pizza, and it had pepperoni and Italian sausage on it, after they said, I can't eat pork, and they just... We're like, well, we're not just going to get a cheese pizza. Nobody else likes plain cheese. And they're like, well, that's unacceptable. That's not accepting of my beliefs. And they're like, well, you know what? I already hung up the phone. They're on the way. Have a fucking breadstick, douchebag. And uh, that's the way. That's the way it went. That's what you know. Obama wanted to believe. You know, it was just a work workplace issue. You know, uh, someone else took a client from him, borrowed a stapler, whatever the hell you want to say. Uh, yeah, that's oh, he was he, he was trying so hard. So hard to pretend that it wasn't what it clearly was. Uh, even scarier, though, is that it it wasn't some... Like, if it were a fresh refugee or something, and this happened as, like, a refugee came in, it would be like, okay, we knew this risk when a bunch of undocumented refugees came to the country. So it's kind of like, you can't be... Sh like, you, it's, it'd be tragic, but you couldn't color me shocked that it happened, you know? you could, I, I wouldn't be like, oh my god, who can believe this? Like, you, you'd be like okay you kind of saw this coming a little bit but this was a guy who lived here was born here and apparently even then was quote radicalized uh to the point of killing innocent people so that's even scarier knowing that they can like someone can live here their whole life and then be so poisoned by that ideology of isis or, or i or, whoever I, it was isis that they were ascribing their actions to that they end up killing people for no reason here, like, and it, it's almost fortunate that they, you know, got caught, no, well, that, that was a terrible way to phrase it, it is fortunate that they got caught doing this, but imagine uh, if they had gotten into, like, a baseball stadium or something, with all those bombs, like, that would have been hard, but worst case scenario is they just go up to, like, the ticket booth or something before they even get checked, and they have, like, three pipe bombs each surrounded around them and then they just blow themselves up and kill way more than 14 people as you're trying to get into you know dodger stadium or something um yeah so it could have been way way fucking worse but that still doesn't really alleviate it but uh it hasn't stopped people from pushing the anti-gun agenda which you know it's it's so beyond the pale like every time this topic comes up i've talked about it ad, nos ad nauseum so i won't touch on it much it's it's too late for the u.s to implement gun control it's too late you will not stop anyone but law-abiding citizens. It, it is too late. I know people in the UK or Australia or whatever the fuck you're, you're living. I know it works over there, and that's because of the history of it. We have too many goddamn guns. Like it's You're not going to harm anyone except for legal citizens who have their guns legally. Like that, that's You can ra argue in circles about it all you want, but that's the truth of the matter. You are only going to hurt people who abide by the law. These people were clearly not giving a fuck whether they were abiding by the law or not. And it's, it, 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 okay, I'm not even going to get into that long diatribe, whatever. Um, but yeah, that whole um, online thing of like, why are people so much more likely to say that the, the these two uh, Muslims who shot up that workplace, uh, why are they more terrorist than, than that guy who killed a couple people at the Planned Parenthood, huh? Huh? It's like, well, maybe because um, 
one of them is a deranged maniac, and it made such giant news because this it so rarely happens that some lunatic, who is a terrorist, shot up a Planned Parenthood. Uh, and the other one is the latest in a string of terrorist attacks uh, influenced, if not directly related, by ISIS, um, which is a giant multinational caliphate, uh, Islamic caliphate, that uh, is offering financial help, uh, direction, instruction to these people. So it's a, it's a distinct difference between a lone wolf terrorist, like the Planned Parenthood guy, who's, you know, there's not, he's not going to some, uh, like, Catholic cathedral every week getting tips or funding from them on how to fuck up a Planned Parenthood. They're, he's just not. And there's a big difference between that and two people who are getting help and supplies and assistance from a giant, uh, powerful, powerful caliphate. Is that even the right word, caliphate? I don't know. I think it is. That sounds like something that I've heard from over there across the pond. Um, anyway, whatever. That's depressing. Um, but it was uh, kind of funny. Not funny in like a ha-ha kind of way. What, 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 what other fucking way do you mean funny, Taylor, you goddamn idiot? Uh, it was kind of amusing today, I guess, that uh, MSNBC's been getting in trouble because apparently they had a few of their reporters. I guess Fox, CNN, and MSNBC... They all went into the apartment of these two people, and it's like an active crime scene. Like, they're trying to figure shit out and get clues and whatnot, and they're, uh, the, the FBI's been scooby-dooing around the whole goddamn place, and then MSNBC comes in, and they're, like, touching stuff and moving it around and, and getting uh, pictures, and there's a, a little clip online of the dude going into the kid's room, the, young, the poor kid that's going to grow up without his parents. Um, well, I guess it's fortunate for him that he doesn't have those parents. Hopefully he'll get some good foster parents. Um, but walking in the room and there's like the crib there and he like moved a pillow and like pulled out a stuffed animal and set it up to make it look more dramatic. Um, real, real douchey, shameless stuff. Um, pretty much exactly like Nightcrawler where Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, is like going around being a creep, like lets his own partner, uh, die, and then just, like, films him as he's dying and whatnot. And that movie's been out long enough. Fuck you if you haven't seen it, and I spoiled it. Well, fuck me, because that was kind of... Uh, I should have thought about that. But it's been out for a while, so it's your fault. Um, yeah, real creepy. Real creepy shit what they're doing there. Going into a crime scene, uh, directly inhibiting the ability of the law to do what they need to do. You know? Like, that's just... That's, that's, that's beyond the pale. Like, you can't fucking do that. How are they allowed to do that? If I went in there with my fucking phone and started filming and doing a vlog, like, uh, like it was just every day. Imagine how funny that would be. It's like they're walking around, like, trying to make it dramatic, and then, like, some YouTuber comes in, like, uh, you know, talking about giveaways or, uh, you know, uh, get this real stuffed animal I just stole from this kid's crib. Uh, like and favorite, and then just he just sprints away. Uh, probably get a lot of views. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to monetize that video, though, unfortunately. Um, but you know, the, the, the sub growth would be worth it in and of itself. And you probably trend on Twitter. Uh, who knows what the fuck am I talking about? Um, anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk about that anymore. It's depressing. Uh, this whole terrorism thing is it's just getting out of control or is it really getting out of control? Are we just getting fooled into thinking that it's happening way, way more often than it really is? Like, has it always been happening this much, and it's just now that gun control is such a poignant issue that people are focusing on it more as ammunition against gun control? little irony there. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And it's also probably because a lot of Republicans out there are pretty xenophobic, and they really hate... Um, I, I won't say a lot of Republicans. There are some, though, that really hate Muslims, and a lot of them really hate Islam itself because they're Christians, and they see that as like a... It's like the rivalry, you know? It's like the um, Yankees-Red Sox rivalry of religions. Like, the Red Sox are is Islam. Like, they're trying real hard to get on the same level as Christianity, but they can't quite push their numbers to get big enough. And uh, the Christians, the Yankees, like, they're sitting on a huge pile of World Series um, atrocities, you know? Like, if we're talking about net atrocities from across the ages... Christianity still got them beat. They got the Crusades. They got the Inquisition. They got all that shit. And right now... Uh, Islam, like the Red Sox, they're just trying to catch up, just trying to get back up there. You know, they're they're they've been more successful in recent years, as far as their atrocities, but they haven't been they haven't met the 
the fervor of the long term uh, disgusting stuff that the Yankees have accomplished. You know, is this a good analogy? Is this is this good? Is this making sense? Yeah, why don't you use a fucking baseball analogy, Taylor? All your UK listeners, they're loving it. They're loving it. All the people in Australia, uh, they're they're really getting what you're saying. Good good point. Um, yeah, that was poorly thought out. Whatever. So uh, that gave me a little bit of like a an av- louder than average exhale from my nose. Uh, seeing MSNBC getting flamed for that. And then George Zimmerman was on Twitter, like, what the fuck, <laughs> what the fuck is up with that guy? He he tweeted out, um, "This is Heather. She cheated on me with a dirty Muslim." Uh, phone number, and he well he put the phone number in there, and then a topless photo of her that wasn't all the way topless, so he couldn't get in trouble for it. Uh, just like right down to where I guess the areolas would begin, and then cut it off right there. A very tactful edit by George Zimmerman, a, a man not known for tact. Um, yeah. Back when his, that whole Trayvon Martin thing was going on, and I was looking at the evidence and whatnot of what was going on, it was like, all right, well, there isn't enough evidence to convict this guy of murder. Uh, because when all the evidence came out, it was like, all right, I, I honestly can believe that he was getting beat up by Trayvon. Like, he had the contusions and whatever. Like, it, it did look like he was getting his ass beat, and he shot in self-defense. Like, all the ballistics, it, it attested that. But... The more I see this fuck, he just seems like a bad guy, you know? Like, he's, he's he, like, he does, like, uh, no Muslims allowed shooting range visits, does, like, sells shitty Confederate flag art. Like, he's just taken this ball, and he has run with it. Like, he has j- complete opposite of what I thought he would do. Like, he's, I thought he was gonna, like, go work for charities, like, helping impoverished black people or something, just to show, like, see, huh, huh, look at this guy, this guy's not a racist, who's not a racist, high-five black guy, look at all these black people, they're my friends, uh, get a picture of us high-fiving, yeah, let's, uh, let's put two straws into a milkshake and drink it together, and then we can laugh at a joke that we pretend we told and put it on the cover of one of those magazines that they give you at the start of a college campus, and you see, like, the crippled guy, the Asian guy, the black lady, and then, like, some white dude on the side, like, staring at him, like, I want to be part of it, but you're not diverse enough, you fuck, you should be something that, aside from what you are. Um, what was I even talking about? George Zimmerman. Uh, yeah, this guy's a real piece of shit. <laughs> he is a real piece of shit. Um, man, it, like, it would be a perversion of justice to, to just go back and be like, you know what, you've, you've, we're, we're just changing this. You're not going to jail for the murder, but you're going to jail for really tactless tweeting and being a, being a fuckhead. Like, you're out of here. Like, ten strikes on Twitter and you're out. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, kill a black kid? Okay, well, you didn't do it on, like, you didn't go out hunting for a black kid, but uh, all these tweets you've been doing, like, all this nonsense, like, fuck you. Like, we're going to at least make you do some community service for that. Um, yeah, this guy's, this guy's a real a real bitch. I would, uh, I would like to get out of my car in a dark alley and follow him around and, and then confront him. Well, I guess he didn't get, I don't know. Now I'm getting, you know, way too far down the rabbit hole of an issue that's years old and nobody gives two shits about um, yeah, that, it just surprises me. Like, it's like if, when Michael Vick was caught with dogs, fucking the dog, well, he wasn't fucking the dogs, he might have been, that might have been the motivation. Like, the dogs wanted to win for a night in Vick's bed. Um, when he was harming dogs and killing dogs with his dog fighting, it's like him getting out of prison and immediately, like, making a point to go to China and take Instagram photos of him uh, you know, eating some weird meat in a stew, and then, like, a decapitated dog head right next to him, and then him just tweeting, like, uh, loving the Cocker Spaniel, LOL, hashtag fuck animals, like, that, it, it, it's just, a, it, uh, I guess George Zimmerman is making some money from this, though, because there's a lot of racists to pander to, like, uh, uh, there are enough people out there that are racist, that it's a niche enough market that they're gonna stand by each other and be like, well, this racist is selling... Uh, a goofy flag that doesn't even represent what we try and make it represent. I'll buy it. Um, yeah. And I'm sure that the similar to that, Michael Vick would get a lot of Chinese support for that. I'm, I'm not sure if they're big American football fans, but they would support him being like, hey, yeah, you're normalizing our eating of dogs. Uh, I think that's great. Which I do think it is fine if you want to eat dogs, you know? Like, it's it's just a cultural difference. Like, there is a distinct difference between... Like, I don't like the false equipment. I think it's fine to eat the dogs if you're over there. Like, I guess they need that meat because they don't have as much livestock or some shit. I just made that up. I don't know if it's true. But I don't like that false equivalency of, like, 
uh, PETA and those fucks will put up on their website. It's like a picture of a little kid playing with a poodle and like laughing and rolling around on the ground. Like, oh, 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 oh we have fun, uh, Mr. Tiddlywinks. And then on the other side, it's a picture of like a sad cow or a dirty pig rolling around in its own feces and other people's fe- other pig's feces. And it's like, why are these different? Why are these different? Why eat one and not the other? Well, I'll tell you why you eat one and not the other, you dense fuck. Uh, One of them was domesticated to be a companion that provided an express service in human beings. So it is a little weirder, intrinsically, to think about eating dogs. Because it's like, well, this is a companion that we bred to help us and to be a companion. Like, we bred them for this purpose, you know? But dogs would be a lot bigger and meatier if we were breeding them to eat. But we didn't do that. That's why there are little white fluffy dogs running around. It doesn't make sense to eat that dog. It's not bred to be eaten. It's bred to sit there and occasionally pee on your carpet and keep in a purse uh, like Paris Hilton did and all those other white girls with rich dads. Um, A cow or a pig, on the other hand, it's like the, the reason that animal is so prolific and they exist is because we like the way they taste. Like, that's the only reason. You think we let a bunch of fucking cows loose And they're just going to be successful right now? The cows that we've domesticated and made? Like, no. They're not going to be able to survive out there on their own. They're cows. Maybe they would. I don't know. Just don't release them in, like, the northwest where there's bears and shit that would kill one cow and just be living the dream for a summer. Um, Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. it, It makes sense that you can rationalize eating a dog or a cat just like you can rationalize eating... Uh, a frog or a pig or a cow or anything, a bird, uh, but the whole false equivalency. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's different. It's way different to be eating your, like, companion for tens of thousands of years that's, like, evolved alongside you, pretty much, than a, quote, companion that we have just relatively recently learned to domesticate and use for food. Um, yeah, what, what the... How did it get from George Zimmerman to me talking about eating dogs? What the fuck am I talking about? Uh, Anyway, I need to get to some questions from you guys. Uh, As always, we start with the Patreon questions because obviously they uh, they are, you know, just the best. They're just the best. All you guys, you know, just solid. Solid people who have a lot of sex, big cocks, uh, lots of money, um... So much money, you know, so rich. Like, you walk around the street, and, and, and women just look at you, and they go, man, I want that guy. I want that guy. You know why? Because he pledged $5 to the Truly Terrible Patreon, and that just gets me wet. Like, oop, you put a, put a wet floor sign down right here, Mr. Whole Foods Man, because I just slopped up your whole entranceway thinking about that guy who pledged $5 to Truly Terrible Patreon, link below. Um, that was gross. That was a gross way to promote that. Anyway, so... Let's take a peek. Uh, oh, this was an actual one about fixing a chargeback issue. This one um, from Anonymous. Uh, you never answered my follow-up question about frats. So far, I've not had any... Oh, yeah, I just saw this fellow. I saw your other message, and uh, I was just going to combine them into two. But this one was more detailed, so I'm going with this one. Um, so far, I've had no success in social life in university. I've basically made zero friends in my first semester. I've just gone by hanging out with my high school friends and socializing online and slowly becoming greatly introverted. I've tried joining clubs that sounded interesting, but you really don't get enough time to make friends in them. Basically, I've had no success. This was not the university experience I had in mind. Should I join a frat even though I live with my parents off campus? And if so, then could you explain how frats work and what is the best way for an introvert like me to get some friends in them? Uh, I'm slowly heading into depression, so advice greatly appreciated. Um, well, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I know I've answered like one of your questions before in regard to this. Uh, sorry the club thing isn't working. Don't give up on it, though. Don't just, like, you know, it hasn't been that long since since I gave you a, a, a little bit of perhaps shitty advice last time. Uh, so keep going with the club thing. Like, it's only a matter of time until something blossoms out of that, I would hope. Uh, as for the frat thing, it really depends on your school, how big it is. Is it a large public school? Is it a small private school? Is the Greek life big there? Is it not? Um, but regardless of any of that, yeah, join a frat. Um, it, it the only thing you can do. I mean, it's it's almost good that you're realize it's good that you're realizing this now because uh, there's going to be uh, you're going to be able to pledge this next semester. So there's going to be rush parties at the beginning of this upcoming semester. And so what you should do is scout it out, see where the rush parties are being held, 
uh, go to a bunch of different rush parties, and what they're going to do, if it's anything like my university was, is they're going to get you really, really sloppy drunk and try and show you the best time of your life and then try and convince you, if they like you, to sign with their frat, and then you'll be a pledge at that fraternity. At the end of the semester, you'll become a brother, and then uh, through that whole hazing process or whatever, and the hazing greatly varies based on what you ever, the university you're at. Uh, some of them are really bad, some of them not so bad at all, some of them non-existent, uh, but that's not only an issue of the university, but also the frat itself. Um, yeah, definitely go out for the frat, talk to... Uh, you can even go to the, if you don't know anybody who's any in any of the fraternities, you can go to uh, like like the Student Life website or whatever. We had something like that uh, where you could email like the heads of the frats or like the, uh, the like uh, rush chair, uh, things like that, and get a hold of them and see when they were scheduling their rush parties to, to meet people uh, as potential pledges. And so just do that. Go to all those parties. Do your best to just make people like you. You know, it doesn't seem like it'll be that difficult for you. I'm sure you're a likable guy. Um, you've said before, it's like, oh, I'm either someone that you love or you hate. It's like, no, well, don't don't put yourself into that category because then if someone doesn't immediately seem like they're loving your company, you're going to immediately assume, oh, they must hate me, when there's a lot more middle ground than that, you know? Well, people are really different. So don't be too down on yourself. That should be your next step right now. Figure out about those rush parties, get involved, and hopefully pledge your fraternity. And once you're in that frat, it won't be an issue of how do I make friends when I'm in here. Like, that's going to come naturally. You're going to be around those guys a lot, and it's going to come naturally. Um, yeah, so best of luck with that, man. You're going to be fine. All right. All right, so Vapo Labs. Let me get out their second copy. Vapo Labs e juice is the best in the world. Don't believe me? Just try it for yourself at www.vapolabs.com and use the code MERCA25, MERCA25, for 25% off your first order with free shipping. Uh, that's honestly the biggest discount I've ever heard of any of these companies that I hear on podcasts. Usually it's like get $5 off your purchase or get 10% off of the first thing you buy, 25% off your whole first order. That's pretty fucking ridiculous. Um, I'm going to use my own code for something soon if they don't give me more free stuff because I really liked uh, that. Uh, I like Key Lime Cloud and the Hippo Milk and the Nuka Crunch. Those are my three that I really enjoy the most. Um, join me and many others enjoying the best, the best vapor liquid on the market at Vapo Labs. Are you ready for Key Lime Cloud? That's the one I was talking about. Our specially synthesized cloud chasing formula will produce more vapor than you've ever seen with fresh cream, sweet limes, and a drizzle of gooey honey. No matter what flavor you decide on, don't forget about juice rewards. Just buy a few bottles and then get one free. It's that easy, so go ahead, pick up a bottle of e-juice from the only company that will give you free stuff. Now with free goddamn shipping, U.S. exclusive, Vapo Labs, science, bitch. Please use responsibly. Must be 18 years old to purchase. Use this product, California Proposition 65. This contract... God damn it, I was so close. Ah, Just go back and listen to the first ad read, and I got it pretty good with that speed read. Um, don't forget, use the coupon code MERC25 for 25% off your e-juice with free shipping only at Vapolabs.com. MERC25 at Vapolabs.com. Support them. It reflects really well on me when you guys use their product, and I actually really do like it a lot. Uh, and I will continue to use them as my only provider, my only purveyor of this product and service. So please check them out, and yeah, that'll do it. Podcast question. Long distance. Hey, Mirka, thanks for your entertaining podcast. You're welcome. I saw that on episode 7 you talked about long distance relationships and how it doesn't work. I had a, I have a related question. I'm 20 in college, and last year I dated a girl for 6 months, knowing she'd go abroad in September. I had my own place, but basically lived with her the entire time, so we were really close. She was going to go to the other side of the planet, so we knew the relation would be doomed if we broke up in good term. Kissed her goodbye before she left, took her plane, cried, etc., when she left three months ago, we kept IMing, FaceTiming, talked like friends, but as time went on, I started to realize I was... Oh, wait, I already did this one last time. <laughs> My bad. Jesus Christ, that was the one where... I, I swear to God, I've gotten that same one, like, three times in different forms. But, anywho, sorry about that. On to the, the next one of these. But my advice was so good from last time, I figured, you know, why not? Why not, you know, revisit it? That was a mistake. I'm not going to try and pretend anymore. Uh, would you rather smell like you just farted 24-7 or smell like weed 24-7 for your whole life? Uh, definitely weed. Who the fuck would pick farted? You think that's going to be in any better? Like, if you were buying something from someone in sales, it's almost worse 
to think that they were farting the whole time they were trying to sell you something than to think that they were just high. Like, the fart, it's also less distracting. Like, you get used to the smell of weed. If you're around people who are smoking constantly at the beginning, it'll be like, oh, it's a little skunky. And then over time, you just, it becomes another smell that you're used to and you don't even notice it. With farting, it's like the, you're not just going to sit in a, a tepid, stagnant mist of a fart for long enough to get used to it because that's disgusting. Yeah, that's, there's not a single person out there who would pick farted unless you're just a gross, nasty person. Um, all right. So my anonymity is paramount. Uh, all right, I will keep it anonymous. Greetings, fellow gentlemen. I have a question on a scenario I am currently facing. I met a girl last month in mid-October. I am 18 and attend college. She is 16. Uh, this girl was visiting my town for a weekend, and I happened to meet her by random chance. I introduced myself, and we hit it off. A strong connection was established in these short days. On the day she was to return to her home, I asked for her number and has an avenue to fan the fires of our new relationship. Probably a bad idea, but I have no interest in any other girl at the moment, so I figured, what the hell? Uh, yeah, that's fine. And 16, that's legal. And you're 18 in a lot of states, I know. You know, just maybe go, do a quick Googling just to make sure. Um, not worth jail. So fast forward one month and we Skype every day. As I talk with this girl, the more I discover about herself, her ambitions and aspirations, her family... Her friends, her kindness, and, ugh, Jesus, and more ooey gooey crap. Yeah, yeah, I didn't need to hear about that. Ugh, she's. Are you trying to convince me or convince yourself? You think she's cute and you want to fuck her? Uh, she shares with me shocking details about her past. Her home life is shaky from parental abuse. Uh, yeah, that's what you want to get into. Just a whole bunch of baggage, right? Um, she has a catalog of sexual partners that rivals the encyclopedia. Jesus Christ, dude. She's 16, and she has a catalog of sexual partners that rivals the encyclopedia. Does she have to, like, alphabetize it? Like, you have to go through, like, Brad. Brad's, Brad A or Brad, uh, Brad's, Brad S. All right. Um, she has a history of violence in school. She confided... What the fuck are you doing? She confided into me details about her suicide attempt. This has gone off the rails, and this is just... this. I'm, a, I'm like halfway through this entire email, and you're in a bad position. You shouldn't be doing this. Uh, as I tend to do, I feel the need to heal her. I give her the time of day when she needs a need. Do you want to heal her? Like, if you be honest with yourself for a little, for just step back, do you want to heal her and her problems, or do you just want to fuck her? Think about it. I give her the time of day she when she needs an ear to talk to. I support her adamant declaration to bettering herself and hold her to it. Since then, she has grown attached to me, and I have feelings for her as well. Here's the problem. She has a long history with the ex-boyfriend because she is deeply attached to his family. Ugh. As a result of that family connection, she talks to him frequently and visits his house from a week-to-week -week basis. Oh, good. She's still fucking her ex-boyfriend. That's good. Uh, we're not technically dating, but she assures me that I am the only man she is pursuing, except for the ex-boyfriend that... Well, I'm, I'm interjecting this right now. Except for the ex-boyfriend that... She's at his house every week. You know, that's... Do you, go on, man. There's some hanky-panky going on there. I am finding it difficult to trust her in this situation, as you should. Uh, it does not help that she is comfortable talking to him on video chat while half dressed. Oh. <laughs> Dude, how many red flags do you fucking need? Um, he even had the audacity to request to see her body. Um, when she did decline this man's uh, request, I am strongly opposed to this sort of conduct. Regardless, I don't want to limit her freedom by demanding she not see him or talk to him. Here's the bigger problem. She had sex with the ex-boyfriend shortly before we met. Uh, Mrs. Einstein, I guess her, decided not to use protection like a reckless girl she is, and as a result, she told me she was pregnant with his child. I spent a solid month <laughs> developing feelings for this girl, and now I don't know what to do. She told me she doesn't believe in abortion, and adoption is not a better option. What? If you don't believe in abortion, then how is adoption by default not the better option? Uh, I had a conversation about the reality of her situation because her parents don't need, don't find the need to. Abortion is still an option, however, time is running out. She is currently resolute on having this child, and her ex-boyfriend plans on supporting her any way he can. She does not wish to have a romantic relationship with her ex-boyfriend just because they have a child together. This girl does not expect me to be responsible for this child at all, even though I technically do not have any skin in the game. I feel that I have a responsibility. What's my next step, Taylor? Um, your next step is to get away. Get far away and do not look back. This is so riddled. This is a minefield that I'm surprised that you have been traversing and not exploded yet. 
She's got a sexual past that's like an encyclopedia, apparently. Uh, and somehow she knows that this is this guy's kid. Uh, she is talking to him half naked on Skype, going over to his place all the time. If you, I don't know the situation as well as you do, obviously, but from what you've said, there's an absolute 100% chance that if she's talking to him half clothed on Skype and he's, she's at his house every week, they are still fucking. And it seems to me like she might be using you as kind of like a free therapist almost, like an emotional tampon to just download insecurities onto you and make you kind of like her sounding board to bounce things off of. And then she doesn't actually intend on, you know, ever being with you. Like, you, you, if she did, she wouldn't be at her ex-boyfriend's place constantly. That's fucking weird, dude. That's fucking weird, and you need to get, get out get out of this. This is going to get so bad so quickly. Like, the fuck, man? This is awful. Parental abuse, violence in school, suicide attempt. Like, I, I think you might... I don't know. I think you're just infatuated with this girl and that you've you've put her on a pedestal and you're you're seeing what you want to see in her, you know? You're seeing what you want to see and even though all the evidence is glaring you right in the face like a fucking serial killer about to slit your throat, you're just not taking no for an answer. Like just get away from this. Tell her that you wish her the best, but that that's, you know, you don't feel comfortable being a part of that her life anymore. Like this is fuck, dude. No. No, get out of there. Let me send send a message back, though. I want to know what happens. Uh, if you don't leave her, it's going it's to go so poorly. I guarantee fucking to you. I'd bet you, uh, if I had $1,000 in cash right on my laptop right now, I would, without hesitation, put down all 1000 of it, saying that if you stay in this situation, it will end up poorly under eight weeks, guaranteed. Boom. Guaranteed. That ex-boyfriend is going to, like, beat the shit out of you or, like, sneak up on you and hit you in the back of the legs with a bat or something. Or she's going to admit that she was lying about being pregnant for attention. Or it's just, there's no, Jesus, dude. Yeah. I can't say get away anymore. Um, oh, that's a stupid one. What the fuck would you say that? Um, all right. Hey, dude, I've been a fan for a long time. I used to listen to your rants every night before bed, and I'm glad to have you back. That's good. Listen to me be angry on the internet, get you know, relaxed for, for sleep. Uh, it seems to me that you answer a lot of questions about relationships and the do's and don'ts that comes with them, and all these advice sounds knowledgeable. Uh, I thought I would try my luck and see if you would answer a question of mine. I'm a junior in high school, 16, smoking hot. Wait. I'm a junior in high school, 16, smoking hot, slightly bipolar or emotionally unstable, probably more, no more than any other teenager. I've always been an introvert, always reading, writing, and listening to music. I've already been through numerous rejections, and I've learned from them. I'm on the chase once again, and the girl I'm hoping to go after right now is pretty cool but religious. She knows I'm an atheist, and, seem, and things seem to be going along smoothly. My question is, should I expect any problems because of our religious view, because of our different views on religion? I've had a lot of people tell me it shouldn't matter at this age, but others have told me different as well. What do you think of this situation? Uh, from one dude to another on the internet, thank you. Um, I mean, if you like her a lot, that shouldn't make that big a difference. Like, it's just a high school relationship. You're not getting married. Like, if you were, like, moved in with her or something or got into a really serious relationship where she was trying to push you to go to church and shit, uh, yeah, that would be awful because you wouldn't feel comfortable with it and you'd know that you were lying um, about believing it or whatever she'd want you to do. But... Yeah, as far as just a little, you know, high school relationship, that's that's fine. Who cares, man? Go for it. Uh, she's probably, if she's like, really, if she's kind of religious, then she's going to hit that, like, rebound phase of rebellion soon. And, you know, you'll be banging her a lot. And then if she's really, really religious, she'll be, you know, I knew, like, tons of my guy friends who had girlfriends in high school who were super religious uh, they were all in that, like, anything but camp, where it's like, oh, well, we can't have sex, but, you know, everything else is on the table. And it was like, because, you know, G anal really fools Jesus. Like, it's like an invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. He's like, is there you fucking... No, 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 it's in the ass. It's fine. Um, yeah, he... Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'll get into that. So, yeah, do that. Go for it. Hopefully you enjoy each other, and maybe you'll even convince her. But don't go out of your way to convince her. Like, oh, your religion's a lie, man. You know, that's just, you've been manipulated. Like, don't do not do that, because that's dickish. Um, all right. 
Hey, I'm 17 and would like to give you a story for your next podcast and your thoughts on it. When I was five, my dad cheated on my mom when she was in the hospital with cancer. She's fine now. And he moved to Thailand when I was 10. After a few years passed, he messaged me on Facebook saying I had a little brother who was five. And then I didn't hear from him for another three years until he said that the boy wasn't his and he left the woman and got married and met another one and got married. Now skip to the future. I have not seen him for seven years, and he turns up at the front door with a little Asian three-year-old saying, This is your sister. I was shocked, but told my friends, Now they just say my stepmother is a tranny and has a massive cock, and my sister is going to be sold in a sweatshop in Thailand, which I find hilarious. That's good. That is really funny. Um, my dad keeps messaging me saying he wants to see me, and I want to know, should I? All of this is 100% true. Um, I was believing you until you ended it with that, so, you know, you know, um... Yeah, yeah, see what he's up to. If anything, get him to tell you some stories from Thailand. That, that That's really interesting. Um, that is pretty shitty that he kind of abandoned you your whole childhood and brought home like a replacement kid that he made in Thailand. But, yeah, go for it. Okay. Hey, Merkin, not a Patreon yet, but really need some advice if you can swing it. So I found myself in quite a quandary with my best friend as of late and don't really know how I should proceed. God tried to sound like tried to sound sarcastic, but came off as a nerd just then. So okay, so let's try again. My best friend made things real awkward recently when he came out of the closet as bisexual. At first, it was just chill, and we kept playing video games and shooting the shit. But then he asked if he could suck my dick, as strictly a friends with benefits sort of thing. What? He asked if he could suck my dick as a strictly friend's... What the fuck is he thinking? I was shocked that he was even bi, let alone that he wanted to suck my dick. And despite being gay myself... Oh, well this got better. Uh, not some flamer, I'm actually pretty straight most of the time. What does that mean? <laughs> Just... <laughs> ah, I'm feeling gay today. Break out the sparkles and the tight pants. You know, and you wake up one day like, ah, oh, just gonna be straight today. Crack open a beer and watch some football. Football! Like, just... <laughs> uh, you act pretty straight most of the time, but you are gay. So you're not like a over-the-top, uh, hot pants, rollerblading gay person. You're like a, like a Todd Glass kind of gay person. Um, I never... Lo or, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. There's a guy. Like, he, he doesn't seem like he's really, really gay, but at the end of the day, he's as gay as the day is long. And so, like, you don't expect it, but he's not a flamer, you know. Um, I had never looked at our friendship as anything other than platonic. Um, Melissa, come over here when you're done killing that enemy, because I want to hear your advice about uh, a guy who is gay getting his cock sucked by a guy who is bi. Uh, this was more offensive, I guess, to the guy before I knew he was gay. But now, if they're both aware and they're just a couple of gays out on the town playing video games, then it's more acceptable where it's like, hey, you mind if I suck your cock? And he's like, ah, you rascal, get on down there. You know? <laughs> oh, you ragamuffin. <laughs> Come on. Get your head down there. Like, okay, I need, I need to finish this real quick, though. Um, I act pretty straight most of the time. I never looked at our friendship as anything other than platonic. I said no, and once I got home, we didn't really talk for a while. Uh, but then he hit me up on Skype and asked again. <laughs> hey, remember that time I asked to suck your cock? <laughs> Just thought I'd ask again. Uh, saying he was actually bicurious and that he had some strong urges for a while and wanted to experiment with me to discover himself and that I was the only person he could trust. I said, maybe we could try sometime, but I'm really not feeling down with the idea don't get me wrong, I love blowjobs, and I've always been open-minded and adventurous. Um, but this guy's been my friend since 8th grade, and I don't want to let something fuck it up. Um, also, I'm supposed to have Thanksgiving dinner with him and his family. Mine aren't <laughs> cool with the gay thing, so we don't really talk about it. <laughs> and I'm worried that it will get awkward. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're supposed to have Thanksgiving dinner with him and his family, because your family isn't cool with you being gay. Uh, even though you're not a flamer, you're just a reg like, you know, regular, regular gay. Uh, and I'm worried about it getting awkward, so I guess I'm just asking, what are your thoughts, and how would you go forward with this? Love the show, and keep up the good work. Um, and this is a good one. Um, well, you can't ask what I would do. Like, I would, I'm a straight man, and so if a guy was like, hey, can I suck your dick? I'd be like, you know what, I'm gonna, that's gonna be a hard pass, uh, for me. But you're gay, and so, if anyone were to be
be cool with having your dick sucked by a man, it would be a gay man. And even he doesn't want to do it. Well, it's the circumstances, I guess. It's also that, yeah. Where it's and like... it's the holidays. Like, if you don't do it yet, if you're going to take him up on the offer, don't do it until after the holidays, because if you've ever had anything kind of weird or awkward happen around the holidays that just every holiday you kind of reminisce about and it doesn't make you feel very good, this might be one of those things if it goes wrong and gets awkward and weird. So I'd wait at least until after the holidays. No, I think you should wait until directly after after the meal. After You're all full, relaxed. Well, Get up here is, and suck my cock. It's already past Thanksgiving. Oh, well, then Christmas. Whatever. Wait until Christmas, eat your big ham, have your cake, your cookies, and then when you're all full and ready for a nap, tell him, tell your his parents that you're going to go downstairs and play Call of Duty, and then uh, just tell them that all the moaning is from Nazi zombies. You know, <laughs> just get down there and let them, let them suck your dick. I, I want, God, right back. Um, yeah, and I don't know. I think it's different for gay men, but I... I don't know. That's a hard one. Yeah. Because I don't know how your relationship is affected by something like that. Because female relationships are a lot different. So. Yeah, I think that if you're not comfortable with it, don't let him suck your dick. But if he's going to be out there sucking dick, it may as well be safe in the safety of your own home. You know, you don't want him going out there sucking strange dick, settling <laughs> his, his curiosity. So if it's almost like the parents who would buy a bunch of booze for kids when you were like 15 and they're like, well, if you're going to get hammered, you may as well do it here where you're safe. Um, yeah, just, you know, let him suck your dick if it's for his own safety. Um, all right. Hey, Merrick, a longtime viewer and big fan of your videos. Been loving the new uploads. You can use this for the podcast. Good, because I was already reading it. Uh, but if you could keep me anonymous, I would appreciate it. I'm writing this because I feel like I have no one else to go to, and you seem like the only person I can count on for advice. I'm in California in my first year of community college. Smart, good for you, saving money. Too many people don't take that route. I used to be really good in school, but now with six classes, I'm failing myself with mediocre passing grades. Uh, I was supposed to go to a four-year university, but money and the limited amount of universities they accepted me made me decide otherwise. All my friends went off to universities, and so the few friends that I had are gone. All I do with my free time is go to the gym, which is my only source of satisfaction. I sometimes go twice a day and prefer going there to deal with stress rather than be at home with my strict parents who only argue and are often upset with me. I appreciate their support through school, but I prefer to avoid friction within the family. Not only that, I usually don't stress about girls and normally I'm good at getting girls, but in college I try to be nice to the ones that I like and even ones that I'm not necessarily attracted to. I'm fairly good at socializing, but recently it seems like every girl I turn to brushes me off. It could, the variety in ages, sometimes up to, it could be the variety in ages, I guess you meant, sometimes up to three years older since it is community college. I try not to let it get to me, but it's been in the last few days. It has gotten so bad to the point that I don't even talk to anyone because I assume everyone is out to be an asshole. I feel undesirable and I'm in a hole of depression. I have been through depression and I'm pretty good at dealing with it by now, uh, but this time I'm aware of it and how much it's destroying me without being able to do anything about it. Uh, it seems like a bunch of random minor issues, but in reality it feels like the inevitable eruption of so many insecurities coming together at once. In the end, I'm 5'6", so on the smaller side, have mediocre grades, get rejected by seemingly every girl, can't make friends, broke as shit, don't go out, parents seem disinterested in my life, uh, and I'm depressed and anxious all the time. It seems like my life is a mess and I have no idea how to fix any of this. I don't know why I'm writing this, but when I should get some sleep, so I'm sorry if it seems like a bunch of whining. Uh... I'm just trying to get it all out. It seems stupid, and it feels like you'd be a good version of the older brother type, so I figure, so any advice you have or criticism, lay it on me. I'd really appreciate a response. By the way, your channel at the moment is awesome. Keep up the good work. I honestly wish you the best. Thank you in advance. Um, that's a lot of shit. That one list in the middle up there is just like, oh, and I feel like I'm a loser, and I'm not getting laid, and you know, I'm, I think I'm short, and I have bad grades, and blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, that, that sucks, man. I feel you. I, I haven't had to deal with a lot of that, but... I definitely been stressed out about school before. Um, the whole rejected by every girl, I think every single guy goes through at least a few phases like that where you'll be really on for a while and then just like a weird drop of the hat. It's just like, oh, well, I guess I changed and I suck now. 
But just forge ahead. It's a numbers game, and you need to keep going at it. Um, and, of course, it's, it's like it's a perpetuating cycle right now, you know? Like you said, you used to have no problem with it. You shouldn't go to the gym twice a day, you know? But uh, you used to be good with the, with chicks, and now you're having a lot of trouble. It, it could be just, you know, one or two rejections got you into a headspace that now you're just struggling to even, you know, come off as confident. You're coming off as not as a little bit needy and desperate, and that's that's not going to get you anywhere. Um, yeah, that's rough, man, but at least you're at community college and not at a big four-year university where you're going to have $100,000 worth of debt or some shit when you're done, uh, and you can stay at that community college for like two, maybe even three years, and then transfer over to a larger university and get that last thing. Um, and as far as the grade thing, dude, like that's that's got to be the easiest fix ever. Like unless it's a class that you are intellectually unable to understand. Like if you're in like physics 9 and it's just ridiculous and you just can't comprehend the information you're learning, then there's really no excuse for bad grades in a lot of those college classes. Like you just got to buckle down and get it done. I had so many classes like that where I convinced myself early on, like, oh, this is so hard, I'll never be able to get it. And after, like, a C on a test or something, I'd be like, well, fuck, like, I am I know I can learn if I just give it a go. And I busted my ass and eventually figured it out and ended up with a good grade. Like, it's not rocket science unless the class is literally rocket science, in which case, best of fucking luck. Um, it's, it's just, you have to put in the time. And when you get depressed and anxious like that, it's really easy to not put in the time for things like school because you get in that headspace of just, oh, well, why even try? I'm going to fail anyway. Or, oh, why even put in this effort here? It's just going to be in futility. Like, I don't know. I can tell you're in a really bad spot. I hope you feel better about it. But really, all you can do is just start with one thing. Start with the grades. That seems like the highest priority for you right now. Start with that. Buckle down. Get it done. And message back. Let me know. Um, getting a lot of messages from you guys saying, hey, I know you suck at COD, Taylor. I'll play with you and make it so you're good. I'm not that bad. I'm not, like, as bad as Kyle is right now. Like, uh, well, I have been playing a lot more multiplayer than Kyle, so that's not even fair to compare. But, uh, no, it is fair. I will compare. I'm better than him right now. Um, hey, Taylor, am I an asshole? My name's Mark. You can use my name. Well, <laughs> fucking good, Mark. <laughs> I'm 17 and a senior, and here comes my long story, if you care to read it. Uh, way back in freshman year, I started dating this girl who was a year ahead of me. We dated until the summer of my sophomore year, and we were very close. Lost our virginity together. Aww. And we're always the kids complained about for PDA. Oh. You, you, you shut me down right there. I'm not big into the whole public displays of affection. I used to kind of... I was a dick in high school in a lot of ways. I, I was kind of known for making fun of people and just like I kind of uh, I was pretty clever and quick and so I would make fun of people when they pissed me off or if I thought that would move me up the social echelon uh and so pe people who did PDA that was like a big uh you know juicy grape of what the fuck does that mean uh, like just easy an easy target an easy an easy mark so to speak like in the hallway uh, especially when it was like well, I should finish reading this before I make fun of this, because what if you're in the same situation? All right. Uh, PDA, the works. I was going to say, like, it was even easier if it's, like, two morbidly obese people who are in a couple. It's crazy how people match up according to their looks most of the time. It's odd. Um, you know the works. After I got over the breakup, she dumped me. We still remained acquaintances, and I actually realized how happy I was without her. My junior year, she started dating my best friend. Ouch. But they broke up after half a shit awfully awkward year so anyway she's graduated now but goes to college in town where i live um started a couple months back i started getting messages and texts from her saying how sorry she was about dumping me and dating my friend uh be careful we started talking again but a short while later her a couple of my friends and i went to a concert in which she got drunk and high and proceeded to puke on me and talked my ear off all concert with random niceties even though i told her we could talk later and i just wanted to the enjoy the concert with my favorite band, A7X. Not that you care. I don't know what that what is that is. Uh, after the concert, we took her home and uh, we took her home safe. And a couple days later, she started nonstop calling and texting me, saying how she loves me and how she wants to get back together. 
I decided I was done with her for good and didn't answer good for you, and have ignored all tries at communication since. Uh, I get at least one drunk late night text a week, but I just don't want to talk to her. Am I an asshole? By the way, love your videos. Been here since Modern Warfare 2 days, and especially your new stuff. Thanks for reading this. Go Blues. However, go Wings even more. Um, all right. Yeah, you're doing good for you. Good for you. Fuck that chick. Break up with you, date your best friend, and then come crawling back when that, that crashes and burns. Yeah, he's not being an asshole at all. Not even a little. I agree, says Melissa, who's playing Fallout. Um, let's find a good one. How long have I been doing this? I haven't checked this clock in a while. Oh, wow. 58 minutes. Um, trying to find a couple more of these asshole ones. Okay. Am I an asshole? This is similar to another one for the show, but here it is, and what happened anyway. In my history class, I sit next to this girl who really fucking smells all the time. It's really disgusting. Anyway, moving on to a couple days ago, I was in history, and she was being mean to me about my weight. I am overweight, uh, which has happened a couple of times before. So in reply, I said, I may be fat, but at least I can keep my personal hygiene to a fucking acceptable level, you smelly bitch. <laughs> in front of the whole class, and she started crying. And then, of course, I get shit, and all her friends start calling me a dick. Anyway, I feel like I might have overreacted, so I wanted to know, am I the asshole? No. No, that's hilarious. That's that's perfect. She... You are an asshole, though. No. Yeah, but it's good. Like, it's it it's funny to be an asshole, though. So I, I don't think being an asshole is bad. I think more people should be assholes in a lot of situations... Because some people need to be put in their place and put in check. That's true, but if you're putting them in their place correctly, is that still being an asshole? Well, yeah, but yeah, it is because you're doing it in an asshole way. But it, it, they need that. They need someone to just be an asshole to them because otherwise they won't realize how fucking stupid they are. And yeah. That, I mean, they need that. If you're trying to be nice and polite about it, they're just like, oh, well, there's just nothing wrong with me. And she was also throwing some stones in a glass house. Like, she had to know that she smells like a hobo mattress and still called you fat. And where did that come from? Like, just out of nowhere? She was just like, hey, learning about Alexander the Great. But what about this fat guy next to me? Like, why in the middle of history class? Did you say something before? Did she is she that insecure in the fact that she smells like hot garbage that she just has to reach out and insult you? I don't know. I don't think you're an asshole. I think that that was perfect and I think you should you should reuse those uh that sentence anytime she's mean from now on. Anytime. You could also try to mend it by saying, you know, like putting it back on her, like saying, "That really hurt my feelings." Like, what you said to me hurt me. No. Yeah. No, that may work for, like, girl spats, but you, you you want the whole class as a man to see you talking to a girl going, You know what? That really hurt my feelings. Pussy! I oh, look at this faggot! Look at this fuck over here! Oh, your feelings hurt, fatty! Oh, his big fat feelings hurt! Like, just, okay. that would be Whatever. awful. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, just don't say that your feelings are hurt. Um... Just call her, call her Smelly, again, if she's mean to you, which she won't be. But, uh, yeah, and then start, if, if, all she gets, if all she's got on you is that you're fat, start losing some weight and just hope that the reason she's Smelly is some sort of genetic defect and she can't fix that, and then you'll always have the upper hand. <laughs> always. Um, all right. Hey, Taylor, if you could keep this anonymous, that'd be great, since that's what all the cool kids are asking for these days. Anyway, to the question, you've said that the social life people have in secondary school, high school for you, that's what we call it in Ireland. Uh, oh, I won't let Kyle know that I'm answering your question. He really hates you guys. It uh, doesn't matter much when you get to college. I was just wondering how someone who doesn't have a great position on the social ladder but isn't terribly unsocial reinvent themselves socially for college. Rereading this, I'm saying social a lot. I was thinking that as I was, I was initially reading it. Um, I'm kind of awkward at times and not the best at small talk, but I'm grand to share a laugh with. I bet you are grand. 
um, or whatever, how do I just change who I am to who I want to be for college? Um, oh, thanks, P.S. Fuck Kyle, and can you call me a slut? Okay, slut. Um, yeah, I've, I've given this. I'll, I'll go through a speed run of this because I've given this advice so many times. I don't know what college is like in Ireland, so I can't even give a good example. But number one, join a fraternity if you can. That will help get you in the door somewhere with a lot of friends and a lot of social access. Number two, join clubs if the fraternity thing is not an option in Ireland um, or sports, anything like that. And number three, if universities are anything like they are here, you're not even if like half of your class from high school goes to the university, you're still not going to see them, any of them, like at all, because it's so it's on a such bigger scale that it's not even comparable. So just become whoever you want to be. You want to be a guy with X, Y, and Z personality trait, just start acting like that guy. Oh, I fucked it up, and that person is now going to not like me. Oh, well, who? guess what? Who fucking cares? There's so many people on the campus that you can, ne- you will never see them again. It's like living in a city. Uh, if it's anything like the school I went to that had like 35,000 people or so. Um, yeah, you don't... You, just think of social interactions as practice. Practice who you want to be on social interactions, and if it goes poorly, just think, oh, well, well, never see them again. Whatever. Just you can make of yourself whoever you want to be, is what you can really do. Um, all right, in love with a lesbian, dear Mirka, I'm an 18 year old in the UK. Oh, uh, tallyo! Uh, at college, met a girl back in March. She's really cool and has grown to be one of my closest friends. Uh, while I personally like her to be more than friends. The thing is, she's a lesbian. Personally, I think trying to make a move is a really dumb idea. Yeah, well, if she's not into dick, that's going to be a hard, hard-fought hard thing. Um, but a lot of my friends think I should tell her how I feel. She can be really awkward, and I think she'd be really uncomfortable hearing that I like her. But my friends still insist I should tell her. What do you think I should do? Glad you're on PKA all the time, and that you've got your own podcast. Um, yeah, probably probably not hit on a girl who, who prefers twat. Watch the movie Chasing Amy. That is all. Well, you can't just say watch a movie. Yes. That's it? That's all you're going to... That is exactly what will happen. No, but if there's the any advice. realm of possibility, don't say anything. Don't bring it up. It's awkward because everyone likes a lesbian. It doesn't matter who it is. Like, they're just... They're great. And you're not the only one... And it would be awkward. Don't say anything. Don't listen to your friends because they don't know what they're talking about. And just accept that she likes, they're a really likes cool, great person, but you can't date them. You know what? Just just masturbate to her like a <laughs> normal person. Just go home, masturbate, think about what could be, and then find another girl. Who likes dick? <laughs> you know, there's, there's nothing like that's not going to go well, unless you know you think she's in like a phase of it or something, and that she's not actually a lesbian. And even in that case, let her go through the phase. Like just back off, find somebody else, find a girl who likes dick right now. <laughs> um. All right. Okay, I'm not going to answer that one because that's kind of fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> Well, it was weird. Um, in episode 8 of your Truly Terrible podcast, you mentioned how little things get you down sometimes because you're high strung. In the same way, and I play goalie in hockey, just like you said, uh, just like you did, rather. I'm 19 years old and I live for the sport. I could talk goalie and hockey stuff for hours with you. It's always been an inspiration of mine to play on an ice team that has a coach and a well-connected team that plays other places, really like a college team. I'm currently in community college and play for their team. But we either play really good teams or really bad teams, so it's hard to get a good vibe on how good we are. So we really don't have a coach, so it just feels unofficial. I'm just kind of upset that my best years of hockey are probably college, which I'll only get like three more years of, and then it's back to beer league for the rest of my career. I thought it'd be cool for you to weigh in. Also, I'm a Ducks fan, and the Blackhawks just scored two fucking goals, and Crawford pulled to come back and win an OT. I watched that game. God damn it. Well, this was like almost a week ago now. But uh, yeah, I watched that game. That was crazy. Um, I was really, really hoping that the Ducks would pull that one out and they ended up losing to fucking Chicago, which is always enraging because Chicago, they've had enough success. Fuck them. Get over it. I watched that game too. You did? 
unbelievable. Remember, we watched the last couple yeah. minutes of that game, yeah, and we... I was just like, yes, yes, Chicago's gonna fucking lose, they're gonna lose, and then it was just, it was awful. It was, I hate it, I hated that game so much. Yeah, it was a little frustrating. I, I'm not a huge Ducks fan or anything, like, I'm kind of indifferent to that team for the most part, but uh, anytime someone's playing Chicago. Chicago, I don't want them to win. Um, all right. Let's do, let's do another one of these. So, not sure what my YouTube name will say, so if this is read on the podcast, so if it is leaving my net, the good God, just say anonymous. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, hey, Taylor, just wanted to start off with saying awesome job on the podcast. As I'm writing this, I just binge-watched five episodes of the show and wanted to ask for your opinion on a couple things, and it doesn't have to be answered on the show. Let me start off by telling you a bit about myself. I'm a 19-year-old male from Canada, 6'2", and mildly smart, I guess. Have a B average right now. Um, my problem at the, at the moment is university is something I don't want to do, but my parents... I don't want to do, but with my parents paying for me to get a further education, I thought I might as well get it. I just switched into a new program this year, but unfortunately it was too late to get... It was too late into the year to get into any courses for my program. I am currently in a couple classes that are just electives that I took, but the rest are classes I couldn't drop from my last program because it would put me too far behind in credits. I know how that is. And would have pushed my four-year degree to five-year one, which is something I totally don't want to burden my parents with. After university, the military was something I did have in mind and was pretty determined to join as a commissioned officer and go into combat arms, so having a university degree is required. My questions for you would be if you were ever stuck in a similar predicament uh, where you had to take courses on subjects you absolutely hated, and if so, how did you manage to overcome them, or any advice to get through this year without losing my mind? Uh, my next situation is my parents are still in the dark about my decision to go into the military, and I don't know how to tell them yet. I've already spoken to a recruiter and done a lot of research, but when I casually mentioned thinking of joining, my parents didn't take it too lightly, and they even mentioned that I wanted to get into the combat arms, which obviously comes with a greater risk, especially with all the stuff going on in the world right now. Uh, what would you say is the best way to approach telling them? Um, I mean, I don't like it, just tell them that that's what you want to do. Like you're an adult now, right? You can do whatever you want and just explain to them. It's like, oh well, you know, it doesn't even matter the real reason. Just tell them whatever you think they want to hear. If 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 your main concern is avoiding a fight with them, just oh, I think it's a good duty for you know, oh Canada to to defend the the great white North like, against the 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 sinful invaders of the Middle East or whatever. Um, just tell them that that's what you want to do. If they're good parents, they'll be supportive of you. Of course, they'll be worried about it, but at the end of the day, they're not going to be mad. They're going to be like, well, you know, that is kind of an honorable thing to do, uh, I would hope. And the whole taking classes that I hate, uh, I did have to do that. I had to take um, a, a, quite a few classes that I hated, just overly leftist um you know, we study things and we shirk the truth that is uncomfortable. Like, oh, we, we learned this about this uh, demographic here, but oh dear, like that's not PC. Like, uh, th this is why this can't be trusted, you know. Uh, just nonsense, stuff like that. Mostly sociology kind of classes, and I hated it. Like social justice, sociology kind of classes. Uh, the best way to do those classes is just to pretend that you believe all of it and go even further with it. Like, just, if they say that, um, you know, X group is marginalized and whatever, don't stop there. Like, come up for an excuse how every single group is marginalized, and no matter what your rationale for it, no matter what, they have to agree with you because that's the self-delusion and the circular logic of the super left, is that... Anyone, it's a race to the bottom with these people. Oh, they're redskin. That's offensive to Native Americans. Oh, it's also offensive to those with sun with skin cancer because of sunburns. You never thought about that, did you? You didn't think about red skin, meaning that that skin that they have when they're out in the sun too long, and then they get melanoma and they die. But you didn't think about that, and they couldn't even laugh that off because then some fucking oversensitive twat would say, "Well, my mom had skin cancer, and I don't think it's fun. You're making a joke out of it." Like they. They are racing themselves to the bottom, so the best thing to do is always just agree and amplify what they say. Agree, Even if you don't, and you're not going to, because it's all nonsense. Agree with what they say and amplify it to the next level, and see how far you can push them in their own direction of nonsense. It's more fun that way. 
Uh, the first class I took like that, I took the complete wrong approach and was just contentious. Like, that's nonsense. That doesn't make sense for these reasons. And it doesn't convince anyone. It just makes you kind of look like an asshole. And so always agree and amplify, and they'll end up looking like fools. And if anything, it can help the other people in your class who were might have been kind of deluded by that agenda that was being pushed into actually thinking about what's being said and overcoming it. Um, anyway, yeah, so best of luck in the military. Uh Tell your parents that that's what you're doing. You know, they they don't have to like it. You're an adult. That's something that I'm still learning is that your parents don't have to 100% approve of the stuff that you're doing as an adult. You know, you want their approval, of course, but they're not going to understand what's best for you in every situation. And that's not some angsty teenage, like, you don't get me, man. This nose gauge isn't a phase. Like, it's just they're not going to understand what's best for you, and it's best to, you know, at least take their advice you know, seriously, because they are older and have more experience, but also they don't know what you want and what you want to do and how you feel internally about things. So so give yourself a little more slack there and and uh, take charge of it. Uh, one more, am I an asshole? Am I an asshole? I'm in my senior year, and I've been really close friends with this girl for the majority of high school. I used to have a huge crush on her during my sophomore and junior years. I let her know about this crush, and she rejected me, saying how she was not the perfect time for relationships, and I understood that she was not, that now was not the perfect time for relationships, and I understood. Knowing that we both had incredibly challenging class schedules and varsity sports, I was fine with this, and we still continued to be good friends. After I got over her, I heard rumors that she had genital herpes. Well, that took a turn. Uh, That was like a Shyamalan twist. I didn't see that coming. Uh, I approached her and asked her about it, and she, really? Hey, I heard you got bumps all over your twat. (laughs) Yep, they're all over the goddamn place. (laughs) Oh, okay, just wanted to check. Uh, It didn't really change our friendship at all. Later on, she started coming on to me and showing interest in a relationship. I just flirt back for fun, but I have no intentions of actually hooking up with her, uh, even though she has a banging body, and boy, am I tempted sometimes. (laughs) Oh, I love I included that in. And boy, am I tempted. Oh, me, oh, my. Golly gee, you know, just watch some old Leave It to Beaver and then pound hers. <laughs> <laughs> Am I an asshole for flirting with her, even though I don't plan on doing anything with her? Uh, a little bit, I guess. No. Like, maybe, I mean, it's it's a little douchey to be flirting with someone and leading them on. Like, you shouldn't do that. Um, but not full-on asshole. Uh, gauge of douchiness, like just like a little douchey, not full on asshole. Um, it is. I I want to know the discussion you had about the the genital herpes. How did that come out into the air? Just like how do you approach that? How do, I don't even know how I would do that. I would, knowing myself, I would have to make it into a joke or something, and then hope that they responded to the joke well. But even then, it's hard to make a joke at someone's expense about their genital bumps without them feeling a little skeeved out by it. What did you say? Hey, you know, I, old blind Teddy over there was eating you out. Said it felt like you know Braille down there, and it's what's up with that? Oh, it's just I got a lot of genital herpes. It's crazy. Looks like uh, like the surface of the moon. It's just uh, how how would you get that? How do you get that knowledge? How would you ask someone if they had genital herpes, Liz? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how where I heard about it. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I heard you got a really mangled muff down there. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a war zone. Are like, you sure it's just not razor burn? She confirmed it. She said, yes, I have no, genital herpes. that's what herpes. I would ask her. I'd be like, y- you sure? You get that checked out? Like... Sure, it's not just razor burn, it's, it's herpes. I would think that she would know. Because nobody is admitting to herpes unless they're 100% sure they have it. Like, you don't admit to that just on a whim. Like, ah, might have been too rough shaving, might have herpes. It's up in the air. <laughs> well, how how old is she? Oh, senior year. I don't know. High school chicks are retarded. I had a friend in high school that gave a hand job to a guy during class while we were watching a film. And that's just beyond bizarre like 
teenagers do fucked up weird shit all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if she had herpes and liked it and didn't care if anyone knew about Nobody it. Nobody likes it. Or <laughs> they're crazy. Or if she didn't have herpes and just was telling people she did. <laughs> That's weird. Because it's way worse to like, have herpes maybe, than to get a hand job in a classroom. Maybe the maybe the herpes is a better explanation than having fucked up razor burn and and bad like ingrown hairs all over your genitals. There's no good solution, but <laughs> only a literal retarded person would be like, "Oh no, they're gonna know I didn't shave well." What's that? Oh, oh, that's my herpes. <laughs> or it's a teenage girl. It could be, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. Um, going to up. Oh, fuck. Well, I got to edit in the uh, fucking advertisement that I forgot to do halfway through this. God damn it. <laughs> All right, so Vapo Labs, check them out. It reflects well on me when you guys use their product. I really like it. And so, uh, yeah, definitely go check them out below. And I will talk to all of you guys uh, next week.